And then the World Bank was created in order to resolve this problem. And the people that created the World Bank knew that the black nobility was still there and was still very much going to try to grab the world's wealth, although um, Jose Rizal and Ferdinand Marcos had taken it and melted it down and put it in a trust. But Ferdinand Marcos, who was a very good lawyer, knew that there's something called the statute of limitations. And after 50 years, after, after Jose Rizal and Ferdinand Marcos had taken the world's wealth, the black nobility couldn't take it back. They couldn't take it back because of the statute of limitations. If the trust that Ferdinand Marcos set up at the World Bank continued for more than 50 years, then the right of the black nobility to try to grab that wealth back would have been lost. And that's, that's where I came in because I was in the World Bank legal department and I learned about all of this. And then I learned that the black nobility hadn't succeeded. The, I think the, the 50 years had ended um, after 2005. It was in uh, 1949 that Jose Rizal put these assets on deposit in the World Bank. And somebody once sent me uh, the, the board of um, directors meeting in the Philippines that showed when Jose Rizal had given his proclamation and declaration of the gift of love. And that person sent me that email. He was somebody from the Philippines, I'm reasonably sure, because I had mentioned that, um, see, there were a number of people that were telling me things that weren't true. One of the uh, people that was lying to me was Wolfgang Strzok. And Wolfgang Strzok told me that um, Jose Rizal was actually uh, a foundling and um, his parents were, were raising him, but they weren't his real parents. That Jose Rizal's real parents were um, from the, um, the English. Well, that, that was a lie. And uh, once I mentioned on DCTV that that was a lie and that Jose Rizal had descended from the people in the Philippines, somebody sent me the minutes of the, um, of the meeting where Jose Rizal had deposited the wealth of the world. So um, there are a number of lies that have been told to me to try to get me off track, to confuse me. Um, one of the first lies was from a group in Taiwan that were saying that, um, that the world's wealth was what they had under control and that I should simply um, help them. Well, it wasn't that I should simply help them. It's because I learned that they were lying and the world's wealth belonged to the world's people and not to this Taiwanese company. So um, I can show you there was another um, uh, liar that was Bank Carlson. So on the on the series in DC TV, you'll see um, how I've I've managed to figure out with the help of a lot of other people that um, there are there are a lot of liars. I call this controlled opposition, but. The story, the jigsaw puzzle, is not finished. Um, we're all responsible for uh, figuring out what our past is, what our true past is. And as we go forward, we're going to have to transform our world in the way that, um, that we agree is not corrupt, because all of the governments are part of this network of global corporate control, the cabal, as we call it and that cabal is being directed by the black nobility. So how are we going to figure out what all the people, when we're not corrupt, and we're not being uh, dominated by corrupt people who don't use their full brains, how are we going to transition? And this, this is where um, 
So I was going to tell you, how are we going to, um, how are we going to use humanity to direct us when our governments are still all corrupt? And this is where we have the wonderful power transition model that we can use as, um, it's an approximation. It's a way of guessing what everybody would want in the coalition. This, this, um, what, the way the, the power transition model works is you bring in an expert who understands a problem very well and who knows um, who's a, a stakeholder influencing that problem and how uh, important this issue is for those stakeholders. And once the expert has those, um, those indicators, you can then use the software to predict with a great deal of accuracy. 90 to 95 percent, how things will come out. So what we're going to do is we're going to find country experts to tell us what they think their country would like if, if all of the people were actually involved. And then if it turns out, once we've come up with that approximation, if it turns out in reality that that was wrong, we'll go back and fix it. So the idea is that we don't have to wait until all the corruption is ended in order to have a kinder world. We can use this power transition model and then we can go back and correct it. It's very, very accurate. So there shouldn't be um, a large correction that's required. But the fact is, it will, we will make all the corrections so that um, it's not, uh, we're not in any risk of, um, of being uh, of, of returning to a, a corrupt world. That was one of the preconditions. That was one of the reasons that we were waiting um, for this, uh, this new reality. We had to find the means of going forward rapidly uh, because if you, if you drag it out too long, people are not going to accept it. They're going to... Um, they're going to want revenge, and we don't want revenge. Now, did I just see a signal that it's, it's time, time is up? No, I'm sorry. Good, I've got some more time. Well, um, so then one of, the, one of the things that I do, one of my functions, is to make sure that we all, we all do inherit the, the peaceful um, gift from Jose Rizal the proclamation and declaration of the gift of love. So um, we're living in the universe where we're part, of, um, we're part of a new reality and we're going to cre create um, heaven on earth. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to care for each other as much as we care for ourselves, if not more. And um, I can tell you through um, my, my uh, experiences, because you know I've been punished. Um, I've been punished for being um, part of this process. And I've been very severely punished, as, you, as some of you know. I'm, I'm sitting here in, um, with a broken leg. Uh, I, was, um, I was pulled down very forcefully. Um, and my leg was broken. This was a way of trying to get me, um, I suppose it was a last ditch effort, of trying to get me uh, to be quiet. But as you can see, no, I'm not quiet. I'm not silenced. I'm, I'm very much with everyone else. Um, and, and as I, I think I mentioned in the very beginning of, uh, of this um, session, I didn't really have a choice. If I love my children and I love humanity, which I do, I'm going to do my part, but uh, it's not just my part. We all have to do our parts. We're all, all of us responsible for each other and for humanity and for loving each other and for our relatives and for, um, I just, uh, I started out by writing something which I'm going to put up